This is a rattler. It's one of the more obvious problems that John Sparry and Joe Hocking of Dutchy Gunsmith near Truro in Cornwall have to solve for people bringing their shotguns in for a service. It'll be, say, general wear and tear on the hook, so the, the barrels will be off the face of the action, so when you hold it up to the light you can see a gap between barrels and action. Although it's not always say catastrophic but it's something that if it as far as the proof house is concerned it's basically is a failure of proof because the barrels are off the face it generally in real life terms it's going to give you more of a whack in the shoulder and also that you can have intermittent misfires because if the barrels are off the face by a good five thou that's an extra five thou the firing pin's got to travel to hit the primer and if you're holding it tight one way it might go off that day and not another day you've got gape there so wear on the latch firing pins warm the hammer springs get weak in time because most people will tend to leave box locks cocked rather than than in the fired with snap caps to let the springs rest and v springs are always prone to breaking coil springs you can get away with more uh, because you've got a series of coils so that if you get one or two coils collapsing, you've got the rest that'll take up the slack. But with a V-spring, if it's, if it's broken on the, on the arm or on the bridge or it's, or it's cracking, it'll just literally go and that's it. And that'll be that. And the other favourite is people at the end of the day shooting, been chucking it down with rain all day, bunged it in the slip, left it in the slip overnight two days a week and then pull it out and you've got something that's the colour of this table as a brown horror and then it's like ah, yeah 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 so I've had that before it's like instead people say no my, my gun's brown it's like yeah worst thing you do is leave a wet gun in a in a wet slip is take it out get it out of the slip just don't let it sweat somewhere warm like an airing cupboard is ideal I actually had a gentleman come in two years ago because he'd put his end on the back of a radiator and when he brought it into me two days later you could see in the U channel one side was just bent like a banana so he said well I put it behind the radiator I said yeah but you're still getting radiant heat it's just warmth mm. just warmth that's all it is and let the wood dry out and then wax it because we get people say well what oil do you put on your stocks and that the, the thing is with an oil if you're using a stock oil it needs time to harden and set as with a wax you can rub it in buff it off and keep building it up and wax will keep your wood fed waterproofed um, without having to worry about you know because people say well i'll rub a little bit of yeah fine if you've got if you've got time in the summer you can linseed your stock or whatever but generally if you're out shooting regularly in the winter is like yeah just just wax it it'll keep it good so joe um, stocks are one of your big things do you come across obvious stock problems at service yeah, usually cracking to be honest normally around the the tang either the trigger tang or the, the safety tang the finer or the fancier the wood the more likely you're gonna have cracks and splits you know everyone comes in it's been raining all day or oh, just lean it by the the ray burn or the the argo or whatever i mean within reason it's almost the worst thing you can do because you've gone from saturating the wood to drying it out essentially kiln drying it uh, one extreme to the other you're far better off wiping everything down or wiping any moisture off oiling your, your metal work uh, less is more normally when it comes to that and then on the woodwork again wiping it clean and if you have got uh, something like a you know if it's been really bad bit of beeswax you know anything just to feed the wood and and just you know i find if because a lot of the time the moisture will, will or rain will take away whatever's been on there previously so uh, it's always worth, you know, if you're going to come in at the end of the day, wipe everything down, lightly oil your steel and, and your woodwork, uh, you know, a bit of beeswax, buff that in. If you want to use any sort of rudimentary oil afterwards, you, you know, more welcome to. But sometimes it's not always best to uh, to chuck it right in into the into the Rayburn, as it were. And, uh, and then, you know, come normally end of the season, stuff will come in, especially on the newer sort of uh, European made OUs where the, the wood's been sort of kiln drying in the first place um, and is quite normally quite brittle um, it will let go uh, or well not you know yeah pretty much yeah a bang and, and, and that you know could be it and a little crack always ends up getting worse and worse over time so. Let's just ask a quick question about storing your guns barrel down or stock down? We always sort of say barrel down. Um, Why? 
purely because if you have saturated it with oil uh, in time, although you won't think, you won't visibly notice it, it will work its way down, um, it will go through the action, and then eventually start soaking into the, into the stock itself. You won't notice it on the newer guns, but on uh, if you ever see old uh, side locks or box locks, normally a lot of real dark coloration around where the stock meets the action, and that is exactly where oil is, is seeped into the wood. And it actually yeah, breaks the fibres down and makes them quite brittle. That in itself in time is, can cause a lot of issues and is an absolute nightmare to sort out. Like all gunsmiths, there's nothing they like better than comparing shotgun disasters. What are, what are the horror stories you've seen? People have come and said, could you just make this, make this work for me? Is that all right? Uh, yes, we have had that, where so if they'll be bringing something in that is, well, basically clapped out and say, can you make it work? And it's like, yes, I can, but it's like everything is cumulative wear at the point and say, look, if you do this, it's going to cost you probably more than... Well, I, yeah, it's one of those downsides to the job. I have to give people the 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 sort of the tough news and say, okay, I've, you know, we can repair this, but I found this, this, and this also. It's going to cost you in this sort of region. We I can't always give people quotes because sometimes something might take longer. So we give them what we call a fair estimate, um, and just and then leave it to them to decide whether they whether they want want to do it or not. And other things sometimes we just say, look. We feel this is like get to the point. It's B E R beyond economical repair, but it's the customer's gun. It's his shout at the end of the day. Happily, most gun owners don't get that treatment. Bring a gun in for service, and your gunsmith will ask you, "Have you noticed anything wrong with it?" If it's either been not selecting second barrel or um, get it odd times, like safety catch coming on after firing a first barrel. So generally to try and find out if it's been giving them any any general problems. Some people say, no, not been, not been a problem, but just give it a service, please. So um, which we then, I say, break the gun down normally and it's into three bits and then proceed to remove stock off of the uh, off of the action and then basically break the action down all into its component parts so removing for example if it's a bretta the trigger unit assembly will actually drop away from the action as a browning is an all-in-one frame uh, so you basically will take everything out so you end up with basically a bare action all component parts will be then looking at um, wear on sears and bents. Normally a lot of time before we actually pull it apart is check firing pin protrusion. Some brands are more prone to wear in the firing pins than others. Generally, let's say if the if the firing pins have got cratering and pitting, we'll replace them. And if they've got sort of something like 10 thou wear off of new, yeah, generally automatically replace them. If the spring hammer springs are soft, we'll replace them as well. And then just, let's say, basically inspecting everything. If anything's got rust on it, it's then cleaned and polished off. Mm. Most load bearing parts, we tend to grease rather than oil because it stays put like all on uh, all sort of um, pins and such like with hammer pins and anything that's load bearing, grease will stay put and keep lubricating, especially same ones on the hook and the knuckle. Springs and stuff are, and other parts are just generally oiled. I've said to people in the past, like you buy your nice new over and under, whatever it is. I say generally inside there, there is very little in the way of lubrication. The best thing you can do is actually get your new gun serviced because then, because what we tend to do is after we've been through everything, checked it, replaced whatever, to reassemble it, we tend to then put a smear of grease over all the metal surfaces, basically because if you're out in the rain all day, moisture will ingress itself. At least you know if there's grease all over the metal parts in there, it's gonna keep the rain off and it stops it rusting internally. I mean, we've had new guns apart and it's like gone, ugh. <laughs> As a stock guy, I keep characterising, I know you do all that, but you know, do, do you sometimes look at John's grease and go, oh, bloody hell? Yeah, it, um, and again... I'm supposed to say no. It, uh, <laughs> it, uh, no, it, uh, it, less is more of anything. It, um, you know, it sort of sounds like you're, you're putting a grease gun to it and, you know, filling the whole thing up. It, um, it is really just a light coating, and that's all you need, really, on, on all of it. And that's the other thing is like, and you know, going back to horror stories, we do sometimes see, you know, somebody is uh, put far too much on in, you know, normally with 
all good intentions, but you know, like the mineral oil and all that working its way through into the stock. You know, sometimes you know, with all of it, less is definitely more, and and you can overdo it. Little and often is better. I always say. I mean, I've had we've had it apart. Was like say you come to take the barrels off the action, and you've just got a mass of grease swamped into there, and it's like the problem is if when you got a whole load of grease in sitting in the action, any dust and dirt in there, it then just becomes an, an abrasive compound. So you're actually promoting wear. So you basically need it just around your hinge pins and, and knuckle faces and stuff and a good smear and, and that's that's it. Um, and let's say if it's been out in the rain, grease will emulsify, but it won't run out like oil will. So that's why we tend to put grease on the load bearing parts. And if you think of most general machinery, anything load bearing has grease, but other places are lubricated with oil uh, to remove friction or whatever. So and most good proprietary gun oils have got rust inhibitors and stuff in them. So it sounds like part of what you're doing is, is you know, you're, you're, you're cleaning it and that gives you the perfect opportunity to see if there are yes. problems. Yeah. So by going through the whole thing, you, is that, is that, that's normally I say what we'll do is sort of, well, I mean, we've got various traces, but obviously once everything's broken down, everything's washed out in cleaning fluid, so it's all cleaned and scrubbed off. And then we tend to, like say, blow it all off so it's dry, and then obviously any residue is toweled off or whatever. And then obviously looking at any, if anything's rusty, we then clean that up as and where. Um, and then let's just just being mindful of what, you know, making sure everything should should be as it, as it should, basically, as clean and functional, and then so and then basically put Crack it back to yeah uh, cracks either woodwork or in the steel especially on the older stuff you will in time start to see um, actions themselves cracking in places so keep an eye out for that yeah just just a general uh, almost like an MOT really and yeah it, uh, from from tip to toe as it were and um, we always, well, say after after service, you know, the well, say we always shoot, test fire everything as well. And, and let's say if it's an OU, shooting it, testing it, not only for obviously its ejection timing, um, but functioning obviously of top, bottom, bottom, top, um, firing singly, uh, firing doubly, just go through an array of different car just cartridges. And also, if somebody said, "Oh, my one tends to play up with these," then if it's a firing pin problem, I can then build up the firing pin and give it a bit more protrusion because if it's catered for a particular problem with a, a particular cartridge. Fairly deep set primer or, some, some primer yeah. or whatever, we can you know, sort of almost tune the gun to, to what they're using if, you know, if they are finding a, an individual problem with it. Yeah. Are you able to give them a kind of you know, a cleaning regime or a uh, looking after it regime after they've been gone? Yeah, yeah. It, um, yeah, really just... Just, uh, just, just, I suppose it was all showing how to use a spoon, but uh, obviously take any moisture off, towel it off, uh, however which way you see best. Um, put a mop up through the barrels. If you if you need to have a you know a brush to get any fouling out, do so. Again, less is more. You know, basically just remove all moisture and uh, oil lightly. Any steel work that would need it. And, and on the woodwork, good good proprietary woodworks. Yeah, so. beeswax. Mm. You know, they all sorts of brands sell it. And again, like a silicone oil, if you want to, if you, you want a bit more of a shine back to it, uh, it normally comes with a wax. If you're buying a buying a kit from somewhere, and uh, yeah, just less is more. And you can also buy grease yourself. Just grease your hooks. Any any low bearing part on the gun. And, uh, we generally yeah. say if somebody's a bit unsure, we'll go through stuff with them, and I like, say go through and, and little things is like the favourite one is is people close the gun, close the gun back up, put the fore and on, and they go like worst thing you can possibly do. No, you actually want to squeeze it together and make it click because slapping your wood against your metal is a good way of cracking it. And the other favourite is if if the dun gun does take a drop and has a clatter, check it closely or get somebody to check it. There are some, some brands and shall we say grades of wood that are more prone than others to letting go and they can be, get a very expensive job very quickly. Hey John, you're a big fan of boar snakes. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, there is a boar snake here. Customer bought in just before Christmas, boar snaking his shotgun through and the string let go. And then said, ah, 
I've now got this boar snake snuck. What can I do about getting out? So I said, well, yeah, I can get it out, but it's going to be a cuss of a job. So I said to people, if, if you persist in using a boar snake, keep an eye on that draw rope. If it's starting to fray, throw it away. We personally use rods, uh, rod everything through, rods, jags, mops, as accordingly, purely because it doesn't get stuck. Yeah, touch wood, we get to remove a rod. Yes, yeah. 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 That's normally a favourite when, uh, when an air rifle user has stuck a load of pellets down there and then he's tried f putting a bit of rod down there to knock the pellets out and then got the rod broken and snapped. We, touch wood, haven't. Uh, but there again, that's our job to um, sort people's um, little foibles out. But no, not a fan of boar snakes, I'm afraid. We've had it also with a rifle, which was even more problematic to get out. And the problem is, is you're trying to push the boar snake either way. All you're doing is compressing it, so you're making it a tighter plug. Different guns bring different challenges. Gunsmiths have to deal with guns from more than a century old to CNC marvels that come with modular components. The modern ones are not necessarily the easiest. From the point of view of servicing and just day-to-day -day use, is that easier or more difficult? To it's, it's, a, it's a funny one. I personally think it opens up a whole new category of problems. Um, and we get it quite often with stuff. I think the trigger dropping out of anything easily is is never a good idea. I, I'm a great believer in by all means fore end coming off, bows coming off, uh, but when you start getting into the remit of, of dropping out triggers for whatever reason, you're just asking for that to drop out when you don't want it to drop out. And Have I've you been, actually come across that? Yeah, in all fairness, not too often, but I don't think it's because the technology has been around for long enough for us to truly see that, you know, the where you know, no matter how well anything is made, it will wear the more you use it. And I've, yeah, it I'd, triggers dropping out. And it, touch wood, we've not had any any safety issues from that or anyone coming in saying that it's come loose and discharged accidentally or, or whatever. But I'm a great believer in especially things such as triggers, you know, they should be uh, held firmly in place and and, uh, and the thing is is like if 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 a spring uh, there's certain brands that use v-springs in their own use and they are v-springs are prone to breaking at inopportune times but yes a detachable trigger unit might be advantageous but there again if you've got a, a suitable uh, stock key uh, to getting the stock off. You can change out a spring anyway, and uh, yeah. And a lot of time we've had with with shotguns with removable trigger units. They're normally an absolute pain in the what's it to get out because they've never been taken out. So you're then trying to push the safety catch and get it detached. And if there's any aluminium and steel, then you get calvanic corrosion. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Better to keep it as a, as a normal solid frame and knocking pins out and pulling triggers out as a normal than, than yeah. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good idea, but has it any real place that I can't say how, I mean, there is, certain, there is a rifle maker that makes a modular trigger magazine unit and it won't betide you if you lose it while you're away um, shooting or whatever. It can be a very expensive affair. And then your rel rifle is relegated, basically totally useless. You drop a magazine, you've got a spare magazine, you can still carry on because you're, everything, your sear and bolt and everything's intact. But if you've got something with a trigger that leaves with the magazine as well... Mm. Most new shotguns sold in the UK are made either by Browning or Beretta or their subsidiaries. According to our research, it's about 75% between those two makers. Which are easier to service. It's just there's some things on brownings that are a bit niggly, but there again, there's other things that are on a brown that are a bit niggly. So it's like you take the rough with the smooth, but it's... So you quite like your brownings, are more... I don't mind. Really. I shoot both. So it's like I've shot, I shoot side by side, I shoot browning, I shoot bretter. The 425s were probably about the, the pinnacle of the game. 325s are probably long in the tooth now, um, but... Yeah, there's, there's still a lot of 425s out there that are in regular use, still being worked, holding, up well. holding up well, working day in, day out, used for a lot of pigeon shooting and stuff like that. I mean, there's newer stuff out there. 
I mean, I can't say a lot about the 725s because we haven't had a lot of them through our hands yet. The 525 follows the 425 genre. The 725 is a little bit different. It's using slightly different hammer springs, but everything component-wise is fairly similar inside throughout the system. As for pre-war shotguns, which large numbers of people are still using, John has a warning. Most of your good, whether it be box locks, side locks, whatever, they're all starting to get long in the tooth. They're all circa 100 years old. I mean, gentleman's bought a William Powell in today. Uh, we've just sorted what his other one out, which basically was a V-spring, the end of the claw sheared off, and in the process it all also had, um, sheared off the swivel pin from the hammer, so which uh, which we've you know, re repaired and fit fitted a new spring. So it's stuff will age. And the trouble you'll find with the older stuff is that unfortunately now, because it's been used for so long, it might come in for one problem, but as you fix that, it then becomes a series of, of Cumul unfortunate events. Cumulative wear, as we call it. And, and yeah. you you know, whatever the problem may be, put a new one in to tolerance, but then that, because it's worn itself in over the last 100 years or 80 years or whatever it is, it will then throw everything else out of... So then you end up working through everything, normally finding something else that has gone wrong that hasn't yet become a problem, but, you know, it might be a cracked claw or broken hammer that hasn't quite let go and such on you know so on and so forth and that and that's why people are I think tending to favor the the newer stuff because you know we're saving granddad's purdy for for the knock around at Christmas and picking up 525 or you know silver pigeon or whatever because you know if they do just you know it's normally is just a service at the end of the season and you can pretty much guarantee, other than maybe a set of firing pins here and maybe a mainspring there, there won't be much else wrong with it. But you know, you bring in your old English gun and it, you know, t service soon turns into a rejoint, new firing pins, new mainspring, cracked stock, this, that. Favourite with the side locks is because so much, so much meat is paired away from the wood that they've literally only got the centre centre bit of the head of the wood that's taking all the recoil and normally the favourite because the locks are shifting back with the rest of it, it can cause cracks and such like. Uh, well, we did a gentleman's um, purdy because that was basically 100 years old and the head was just starting to smash up. So it's, yeah. Um, the thing is, I mean, they've done they've done 100 years service, so it's like everything is... Unfortunately, um, they don't last forever. Nothing, no, and people are expecting us to say, well, can you make this you know say well fine but it's it's already been how many hands has it had and how much use has it had so it's like it's everything has a finite life the next big challenge in the world of gun servicing is likely to be the effect steel shot has on barrels it's just on steel have you come across streaky barrels not as yet not yeah nothing nothing i mean you you will get light streaking in, in older sort of softer stuff modern stuff's chrome lines so you won't pick it up as much um, but to be honest this part of the world they're, they're pretty slow on on uh, taking up really we're still on lead 99.9% uh, yeah. of them are still using lead and, and there's a few places that uh, are sort of dutchy owned or whatever that they'll have to use steel on but we're sort of yet to but to be honest you, most people are just using a Brett or a Browning for it and, and just saving the, the lead for the older guns uh, purely because of the sort of stigma with with the steel shot and older English stuff and, and what like. I mean we're just we'll say watching this space to see how how the how how everything runs and goes in the future. So I mean which yeah, I mean everything's still up in the air so I mean and people saying, Oh should I do this, should I do this? Well just just wait and see. Uh, and then, then let's like, say, if you've got an older gun, let's like, say, when we'll look at it and say, well, okay, depending on what age and such, like checking proofing and wall thickness, and go, we'll go through it then. I said, you know, I said, uh, at the time until until we've got a change, keep keep doing what you're usually doing, and then just when we've got to move with the times, we will move and progress and maybe by then manufacturers have sorted out something that's probably a bit less. The thing is when people say it's steel, yes, it is so it is soft steel, but it's of the same hardness as your barrels, which is why they're having to make a, a, a cut wad to, you know, encapsulate it. So it is not going to cause a, a barrel wear problem. So, 
Um, and that's why lead's always been used because it's softer than steel, so it's not going to cause the wear on your on your bores. I mean, most people say, oh, well, if granddad's guns this and it's been worn and that and shot. Actually, more wear actually is generally promoted through older guns because they've been left to get pitted and then it's gone to the gunsmith. So the gunsmith's then given it hone out to get rid of the pitting. So actually more more wear occurs normally at the gunsmith than, than, than yeah, what grand true. actual use. You might have a thou or two wear in, in t over time, but very little, but it's generally, I say, older English guns because they're not chromed or whatever. Um, and if you leave them go damp, they'll go rusty and you'll get one, well, you'll get likes of that. So you'll like, end up with a no nice lot of pickling in your, in the inside of your barrel, that, which is then looks unsightly. And then that's when they say, oh, can you tidy that up and give it a hone out? So you can probably lose, you know, a couple of thou either side of your walls just so they got a nice shiny bore again. One thing to try to remember is to book your gun in for service well in advance of the season. Actually, just after the last season would be a good idea. People are, are pretty good. Um, I say we have a far ranging customer clientele base. So uh, we have been gradually sort of getting people saying, if you're going to bring it in, fine, please bring it in either in the spring or the summer. So it gives us time to get stuff sorted, made, organised. We cater for, in the winter months for what we call emergency repairs for different estates as well as private customers because there will be things that break, springs, firing pins, which will, can go at any odd time. It's like any wearable part. Uh, so some people do are a bit sort of like, oh, I've been meaning to bring it into all year and now it's like, ah, uh, and I'm shooting next week at so-and-so and we've got a big bird day. Can you get it serviced? It's like... Yes, okay, go on then. <laughs> it's like it's, it's, yeah, I mean, people normally end up bending your arm a bit and you sort of say, I'll do it, but don't tell anyone that I've done this because everyone's going to want it done. Uh, I mean, some things, I mean, nine times out of ten, within reason, you can make it work. Um, if it is just a case of a light repair or a service, but sometimes it is, you know, you, your time frame is constricted and you just, it's, you know, you if you need to get a part in or if you're going to have to make a part and you know they need it for tomorrow sometimes you sometimes you can put it out of the bag sometimes you can't so you just got a case by case really on that one and we're all sods for it um you know we all come to february and sort of oh, you know i'll have a, a good clean at the weekend of all my shooting kit and then you sort of realize oh christ you know you know the summer has gone and i've you know left the side in the in the cabinet and and haven't touched it since so it uh, but no we all we are you know all guilty of it to a point it um but yeah if you can get it in there the sooner the better i think is uh, yeah and just makes life easier for everyone then the uk has a great tradition of gunsmithing well we practically invented it and there's bound to be a good quality gunsmith near where you live for more from dutchy gunsmith visit dutchygunsmith.co.uk